for StarCraft. Welcome back for episode 3 of this Dark Souls quick game guide, whatever you want to call it. This is going to be a really important episode. We're actually covering a lot, and um, it's a little bit of a shorter episode in length, but um, I do do some editing, and we'll, we'll explain uh, as we go along here. There's actually a lot I need to talk about for this particular episode. So first things first, uh, what we're going to cover in this episode, we're going to get the Drake Sword right now. Um, I'm actually going to just line up here with a bow and arrow. I need to line up uh, between the two middle columns, so we're just moving up here. And um, all you do is take aim at this red dragon's tail. And um, as I'm just going to show you here, you hit the tail, the dragon takes off, and he starts marching along the bridge, and you can get a second pot shot off right there. Uh, so you just repeat those two shots about five or six times. I'm actually going to speed up the video here so we don't need to watch uh, all of it. Um, so this is a way to get the Drake Sword, and um, a little bit later on in the video, I'm going to kill Lawtrek and take his ring, the uh, Ring of Sacrifice and Favor, or Favor and Sacrifice, whatever it is. Um, it's actually a very powerful ring as well, and one you're going to want to wear all game long. So uh, I'm going to show you that a bit later on. So there we go. Break off the Dragon's Tail, get the Drake Sword. This is a six sword because it does 200 damage just straight up, and you basically one-shot all the monsters uh, at this stage of the game. Um, I did do a cut there because when I was recording this last night, I... Uh, I got the Drake Sword and I realized I didn't actually have the 16 strength that you need to use the Drake Sword. So we had to go farm some souls, about 5 or 6k, uh, level up a bit, and uh, now we can continue onward uh, with this new weapon. I'm just going to take out these uh, rats here. You actually don't want to underestimate them. I mean, they don't do much damage, they don't have much health, but they can poison you even after like 2 or 3 hits if you don't have any resistance. And if you're poisoned at this point in the game, you probably don't have the cure, so you're gonna be screwed so be careful of that rats are good to kill good to farm too they often drop humanity so now we're just going to continue um, sort of through undead burg and into undead parish um, in this zone here you're going to want to be careful not to get ambushed because there are some uh some undead uh, guys just sort of lurking in corners and can kind of catch you off guard if you're not careful there's also a mini boss that you caught a glimpse of uh just a few seconds ago it's like a, a horned uh i don't know what you call them it's like a hog. Um, there's a particular, like a boar. A boar, that's the animal I want to compare it to. Um, but this version is much bigger and made out of like metal. I can't actually kill him right now unless I wanted to waste a whole bunch of uh, fire bombs, which I don't really want to do. So I'm not going to kill him. I'm just going to take out these bad guys who are on the roof and then we'll move along. Gave that one guy a little kick as he was trying to block. So that breaks his guard and you can just slash him down. These uh, crossbow guys are really no problem. You can actually even lure that boar uh, type monster into uh, into the fire because there's some fire just sort of scattered about and he'll take a lot of damage like that. Apparently he doesn't have much fire resist but we're going to forget about him for now. Uh, just get rid of this undead soldier and uh, sort of move down here, down the stairs, through the hallway. You're going to want to be careful here as well because if you just run into this room you'll get ambushed from a, a few different sides. So I'm just trying to actually bait those uh, monsters into attacking. Because even though these guys are simple to kill, like one-shot kill, if they surround you or if there are like five of them attacking you at once, it's probably not going to end well. Um, the next uh, couple minutes aren't uh, super eventful in terms of like uh, secrets um, or just stuff I need to explain. So I'm going to give you a little background information on what we're pursuing now. And I'm actually speeding up the video as well. Uh, we're going to go ahead and kill... An NPC in this game. Now, in Dark Souls and Demon Souls, for that matter, it is almost always a horrible idea to kill NPCs. We're actually going to slow the video back down and sneak up on this guy. If you walk slowly, monsters won't detect you, um, especially if you have light armor. So we just do a nice backstab there and actually one shot this particular uh, uh, that particular undead knight. We picked up his kite shield as well, but it's just too heavy. Um, and man, I value very much having like a low equipment weight so I can run quick and roll quick and everything. So I'm not going to bother using his shield. Switch back to my original. This Lawtrek NPC, he deserves to die. And we're going to go hunt him down and we're going to go murder a murderer. If you don't kill Lawtrek, he comes back later in the game and he actually murders the firekeeper. Uh, the one that we, uh, the one that helped us out in the last video. Um, helped us uh, bolster our, our Estes. Um, he actually comes back and just slaughters her. Poor girl. Doesn't speak 
to anyone, just sits quietly, is in a cage, and he murders her. What an asshole. So <laughs> we're going to make sure that that doesn't happen, and we're going to go and kill him. Just continuing on here, most of these monsters are pretty straightforward. Um, I chose this particular path to get to the Undead Parish, which we are at now, and this is another uh, mini-boss. We're actually going to kill this guy, though. He only takes a few hits once you have the, uh, the Drake Sword. I'll also mention that um, the zone that I just came from, um, I turned left to enter this Undead Parish. You could have made a right instead, and that would uh, take you down a, a long pathway. Oh, he's trying to heal, but I uh, capitalized on that op opportunity. You can actually make a right and head down a path that um, doesn't have any monsters and leads you straight to a bonfire. When you're playing, definitely hit that bonfire up first. Um, I didn't bother doing it, but you definitely should just to save. And as you saw there, I picked up another Firekeeper Soul after I killed off that mini boss. And we're actually going to take the Firekeeper Soul back to uh, the Firekeeper to upgrade once again. I just hopped off that elevator shortcut early. Uh, actually, really too early. I took quite a bit of damage there. But you can hop off um, before it reaches Firelink Shrine and um, go to this secret here. Do a roll, land on this pillar here. Um, and as you head up, you can go up these stairs, roll onto the roof, and just down there is a key that you're that we're going to want to use a little bit later in the game. Um, I'm actually going to show you now. If you look right at the point of my uh, character's hat, you can see a bird's nest there. If you just uh, go up to that bird's nest quite easily from where I just was, you can r roll into a ball, and the raven there, or whatever kind of bird that is, will actually pick you up and fly you back to the Undead Asylum, um, where there are a whole bunch of new monsters and some new loot for you to get. Um, here I am just reinforcing my Estus to plus two. So now that's actually going to be really good. It's almost like a full heal uh, for this uh, for this low amount of vitality that I have. And I'm going to use this shortcut now, now that I've unlocked it, and head back up to Undead Parish. It's another good thing about this game, unlocking the shortcuts and, and sort of uh, seeing how interlinked uh, this whole game is uh, as you progress. Helps out a lot too, once you sort of learn the lay of the land or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can get around a lot more quickly. Let's see what this guy actually dropped. A buckler, so that's his shield. I'm not going to bother using it, though. This next zone here has a, has a mage that uh, he only actually respawns. Uh, he, he doesn't respawn after you kill him. You, you wanna wanna, you're going to want to be careful here as well. You don't want to just run out um, into that sort of open area. You'll get killed very quickly um, and just surrounded by these... Uh, by these undead so you don't want to do that I'm just really taking my time being extra careful here um, it's it's a little bit tough dealing with these undead and taking that magic uh, magic missile type damage so I think we're just gonna go kill off the mage here and then we'll almost be ready to take on law trek using a little Estus there um, it's good that I actually went back to firelink shrine as well because um, the firelink shrine Bonfires kindled, which means you get 10 Estus flasks instead of just five. So that's going to help out a lot, especially against Law Trek, because Law Trek is a tricky fight. And, um, well, you, you'll go ahead and see in just a couple minutes when I encounter him. I'm not entirely pleased with how the fight goes down, but it's okay. Um, the area that we're, we're just leaving right now I and mean, we're going up these stairs, if I went back, you can go to where the uh, gargoyle. gargoyle sort of bell tower nidus Ooh, i'm a little bit sloppy there you can see when enemies are actually trying to parry you and i saw that he was uh parrying i mean watching this replay but in the moment i just kind of swung a little carelessly and he did a parry and a i guess you call it a, a repost which is how you counter after a parry it does a tremendous amount of damage that critical hit that's the parry that um i can actually do with my shield there and uh, I should use that a lot more, and actually I should be using that parry uh, a lot during this upcoming fight, but I don't, unfortunately. Uh, as I was mentioning before, the, the Gargoyle Bell Tower uh, Demon is, is who you fight at the end of this, but I'm not going to fight him in this episode, I'm going to fight him in the next episode. Using the Mystery Key that I picked up um, a little bit earlier in the Undead uh, Burg. Uh, open the door here and basically set him free. Now, if you leave Law Trek um, to his own devices, he will just uh, show up in Firelink Shrine after you kill the boss here. And uh, seems like a nice guy for the meantime, but don't get it twisted. He is a dick and he's going to kill the Firekeeper, so we're going to put an end to him right now. 
starting off with a heavy attack, and using a two-handed heavy attack with a Drake Sword actually uses up uh, the durability of the weapon as well. Now this part of the fight, I shouldn't be engaging here, I shouldn't be fighting on staircases. Your best bet to take on Lawtrack really is to just lure him uh, way back to the sort of the open area that we came from before, and eventually I will here. I know everything's all sped up. Uh, I'm just blocking, and then when he makes a mistake, I go for a, a, a heavy one-handed attack. I'm using the Estus, but a little bit sloppy as well, like not having a, enough distance. Ooh, getting pretty low on health. I only got one flask left. He's really low on health now as well. So this is sort of the final encounter here. I don't have any healing left, and I get the final blow off there. Um, again, it would have been nice to use parry a little bit more. You see his attack coming, and right before you take damage from it, you parry and counter for like triple damage or something. But it's more risky as well, and I really didn't want to die because uh, that's just really frustrating, especially when I'm recording. Five humanity and ring of favor and protection. The ring is really what I wanted here. It's actually the first ring I've picked up in this game, and um, it boosts your health, your stamina, and your equipment load, but the catch is you can't ever take it off. If you take off that ring, you die. You die. What am I saying? I don't know. You doesn't. You don't die. You take off the ring, and the ring dies. The ring breaks, and you can't ever wear it again. But you know what? That's cool because I put it on now, and I'm gonna wear it forever. I think it's pretty standard, actually, amongst a lot of characters that you go for that ring, and that's just the ring you wear for the rest of the game because it's so powerful. So I definitely recommend grabbing that. Uh, Law Track can be a little bit tricky. It may take you a few tries, but if you rest at that bonfire, it's not a very long walk to get to him. Um, and you can go back and take him on as many times as you want, as many times as it takes to kill him. Uh, so we lit that bonfire up here. Uh, this is the first blacksmith uh, we're encountering, Andre. And um, he's very helpful throughout the game as well. Constantly coming back to this guy, um, largely just to upgrade your weapons. So I'm just going to go ahead and repair all my stuff. Uh, that was basically it for this video. I just wanted to show you how to get the Drake Sword because it is such a powerful um, early and mid-game weapon. And I wanted to show you how to get that Ring of Favor and Protection because you're going to wear it all game long and it helps you out so much. Um, so there's no boss fight in this video, but we are going to take on that uh, Gargoyle Demon in Episode 4. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, thanks a lot for the support to everyone commenting and liking uh, episodes one and two. I really, really appreciate it, guys. And, uh, I mean, look forward to...